What is a SIP transaction? I believe the best resource to answer this question or overall any question about the SIP is to refer to the SIP RFC. Let's see what SIP RFC says about SIP transaction. A SIP transaction occurs between a client and a server and comprises all messages from the first request sent from the client to the server up to final non-1xx response. Okay, I think this will be the most boring topic and video that I have ever recorded and talked about. I have another suggestion. Pause the video and read the RFC yourself. Let me explain to you what I understand from SIP RFC about a SIP transaction. SIP transaction consists of a single request and any response to that request. Let's explain based on the SIP graph that I have here. I have a scenario here. We have two SIP guys, Omid and Karsten. As usual, Omid calls Karsten to ask him some questions. Here is a, a real call flow, actually. It's real and happening every day. So let's see how many transactions do we have in this scenario. Here in our SIP flow, uh, let's first see how many requests do we have. We have one invite request here, an ACK request, an invite request, another ACK, and a buy request. So, based on our understanding, a SIP transaction consists of a single request and any response to that. So, we should have five transactions because we have five requests, right? No, no, because we have a condition here. If the request is an invite, the transaction also includes the ACK. So, here we have an invite request. It says the transaction also includes ACK. Okay, so this ACK is in the same transaction as our invite. So invite, unauthorized, and ACK are in the same transaction. Pay attention, we have another condition here. If the final response is not a 2xx response, it's not a positive response. Here we have an invite. It's a 401, it's not a 2xx response. So the ACK is in our transaction. Let's go to the next request and responses. Next one, we have an invite, trying, ringing, and 200 OK. When we reach 200 OK, based on our condition, the transaction is closed. So this is our second transaction, up to 200 OK. When we have a positive response, then the transaction is finished and ACK is not in our transaction. So the next transaction is just an ACK transaction. And again, we have a buy and its response OK. So we have four transactions here. First transaction includes one in white, unauthorized, an ACK, and why? Because it's not a positive response. It's not a 2xx response. So the ACK is included in the transaction. Next one, the ACK is not included, so it is up to 200 OK. Because if it is a 200 OK, then the ACK is not included. Third transaction is just an ACK. And fourth one is a buy and its response that is OK. So we have four transactions here. Let's go to next example. I think this example is quite easy and you can guess that because we have uh, two invite requests and we don't have any positive response or let's say 200 OK response. So the ACK is included in our transactions. We have an invite, unauthorized an ACK. This is our first transaction. And second one, invite not found an ACK. And this is our second transaction. But is there any way for us to identify if a SIP request and its responses are uh, related to the same transaction? Is there some sort of unique ID? Yes. The branch parameter. If you see in the SIP packet, you can see the uh, invite, we have a branch parameter that this branch parameter is the same in the all request and response in the same transaction. Of course, again, we have but here. 
The branch parameter value must be unique across a space and time. I love the language of the SIP RFC. It must be unique across the space and time for all requests sent by the UA. The exceptions, that's what's interesting. The exceptions to this rule are cancel and ASIC for non 200x responses. Of course, the ASIC we have discussed, we understand it. Now let's go to the cancel. The cancel method is used to terminate a pending request. That makes sense? When a client sends a request and then decides to cancel it before receiving a final response, it sends a cancel request to terminate the original request. So we are sending an invite. Before we get a response, we want to cancel the transaction, the, uh, cancel the request, and then we are sending a cancel. And here is the interesting part. A cancel request will have the same value of the branch parameter as the request it cancels. Look at the photos here. I have an invite and I have a cancel. The bar branch parameter is the same for both. This is a cancel that is sent to cancel this invite, to cancel this invite. And both of them have the same branch. The cancel request typically includes the call ID. It's, it's good to learn something about the cancel as well. If you check here, the call ID to, from, and sequence header fields are exactly the same in our cancel and in our invite. This is not related to branch, but yeah, let's learn something else as well, right? So these parameters are the same in the invite and cancel, and the branch parameter is the same in the cancel and the invite that it wants to cancel it. Understandable, I guess. Let's go back to our C flow. Do you think how many different branch parameters do we have in this C flow? You can run a simple lab to get the answer yourself. What do you need? An station? You can install a soft one like Zoiper on it. A VM virtual machine or a hosted machine on the cloud that you can set up asterisk on it plus SNGREP. I have videos in the channel that I explain both how to install asterisk and how to install and work with the SNGREP. Asterisk because we want to uh, terminate our session, SIP sessions there as a back-to-back -back user agent and also SNGREP to capture the SIP packets. And I have a folder included in the post that I provided all the configurations for the SIP, PJ SIP, and also dial plan. Also, I have included the PCAP files that you can open it and go for different scenarios that I have tested, and I will test in the next videos as well when I want to explain about the SIP dialogues, etc. Thank you for watching. I hope this video is useful. And if I have a mistake anywhere, let me know. I'm reading the RFC, and I may make I may make some mistakes. I will be happy to hear if there is any. Thank you and see you in the next video.